everyone. I'm Aubrey Schmally, and I'm the owner of Sensational Achievements and the creator of Buddy Activated Learning. Today, I wanted to talk with you more about uh, dysgraphia and specifically uh, when someone says your child has a visual motor problem, but then when you look at the details, um, maybe visual motor is the box that it gets categorized in on the evaluation, but there's really some underlying elements that are contributing to the presentation of having a visual motor deficit that really uh, need to be looked at a little bit differently in order to provide the best support and the best intervention. Visual motor issues uh, may not just be from difficulties with visual perception, or um, integrating vision and motor. They could come from difficulty coordinating and grading your muscles so the figure doesn't look very accurate when they copy it, uh, which drives down their score. It could be that there's a visual monitoring issue that where you need to actually train the visual system to guide what the fingers are doing. Or it could be a motor planning issue where the child just doesn't know how to approach the build of the figure and they're still struggling with the sequence of what to do. Number two, uh, vision. If I do not use my eyes successfully to guide what my hand is doing, the chances of me getting the size right, the chances of me uh, getting it inside the lines and successfully and legibly completing the written work or even the design copying is going to be compromised. So on a visual motor test, this might look like um, a child who is supposed to be copying something in the box. Let's just use this for uh, ease. They're supposed to be copying this shape into the box and they don't really use their vision to monitor what they're doing. So they make the lines, but you notice that even if they're able to form or somewhat copy the design itself, there's not very good monitoring of the boundaries. They're really, they're making the motion, but there's no grading and control because they're not really monitoring the endpoints. This is an extreme version. Another version might simply just be that the child never stops at the end of the circle or every time they get to a corner, they're doing something that causes this overlap. This overlap is often due to lack of visual monitoring, not really accurately picking a point to start, uh, and then making sure that they grade their muscles and adjust so that the figure comes out more accurately. That creates overlapping lines, it creates messiness, and generally, again, drives down their score on the visual motor test, but the intervention that we're gonna be doing is to build visual monitoring. Easy way to do that, uh, again, uh, using the whiteboard, we might uh, put some dots uh, up and down, side to side, wherever we want to help to train their eyes to go. And then we're not gonna put them all at the same height. And the reason for that is because we want to constantly have them redirect their visual attention to the goal. Some kids will still do this in the beginning and it'll be very clear that they're not visually monitoring where the goal is. Some kids, that's all it takes. They, they're been told that they have to hit these lines. They're all at different sizes and so they will slow down, try to hit the lines, stop at the lines, and successfully be able to engage in this exercise. Uh, other kids will need a little bit of a different strategy. And I end up using this a lot because uh, when kids don't engage their vision, it's very hard to kind of um, adjust the task to, to trick their eyes into activating. So I take their hand and I might just tap the, the dots. So, um, and I might just tap one set of dots if it's really hard for them so that they're getting the tactile and proprioceptive feedback from the board 
that they're supposed to be shifting their attention from bottom to top or top to bottom, whatever direction we're going. And after I do the taps, then I have them draw the line and stop at the dot. Go to the next one, tapping down, tapping down. We use that kinesthetic awareness to help them determine the direction of their movement, but then the tapping feedback to draw them in and engage their visual attention. We also want to do this to the right and left, um, and then we can take this exercise and apply it to a shape design. Uh, dots become a very successful way to uh, work on visual monitoring and attention shifting. So I do recommend that you use them again as a sort of a, a training strategy. You might want to do different colors. You might want to uh, make them out of wiki sticks so that they're really bumpy and the child ends up bumping into the dots. Uh, but it's definitely important to practice specifically up-down visual attention shifting and right-left visual attention shifting in larger space, getting that kinesthetic feedback before you move on to smaller spaces and onto a page where the child has to do it in a bit more refined way. Those are my tips for today on helping a child with visual motor deficits um, who also maybe has a dysgraphia presentation learn how to address these issues so that they can have better outcomes in their writing and drawing skills. I'm Aubrey Schmally. If you like this video, please uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, uh, ask me questions, and I will try to respond. I hope that this helps you help your child be successful. And if you're a therapist, gives you a few different ideas of how to work with a child who may have some of these things that show up in their visual motor testing. I will be back soon with more tips and strategies and activities to help your child be successful. We've covered the fine motor. We've covered the visual monitoring, and the last thing is motor planning. Motor planning um, can significantly affect a child's ability to copy a design when you know they did really fantastic, maybe on the visual perception part of their standardized testing. So they got a high score recognizing the image, they know what the image looks like, they're able to see it in their mind, but they're not able to take that image and then motor plan the sequence that they're supposed to go through to be able to reproduce it. So um, some different examples that I have seen uh, are anything that involve multi-part designs as designs get more and more complex. So I'll just put a couple multi-part designs on the board. Um, and when the child goes to copy, you might see a very kind of segmental approach. Um, or what might happen is the child starts in the wrong spot and instead of going down, or they might go down and over and then they might go up and across to produce the shape. Um, or they might start at, start at this side and then try to go around, which creates a flipping uh, position because they started in the wrong spot. That's called a kinesthetic reversal. My approach was wrong, so therefore my outcome was wrong. This is also very common when you have kids that start in the wrong spot and try to make a five, or um, start in, in doing the wrong curve and then, they're, and then their two flips around. So I do see this a lot um, in writing in B's and D's, I'm always trying to look for, do I have a kinesthetic reversal just because a child started in the wrong spot? And if that's the case, you need to retrain the motor plan and get away from tracing activities where they can kind of use their own strategy to stay on the line. And really, again, maybe work towards a dot to dot sorts of things where they're, where we put in, you know, one, two, three, four, five, to get them to follow the motor plan and then do the same thing with their eyes closed so that they can engage that kinesthetic feedback system and 
be able to internalize that sequence for themselves to be able to reproduce it in another situation. Uh, if I was taking this triangle, again, sometimes I'll see the kids might draw the circle first and then try to add the triangle so it's the wrong size to begin with. Um, they might do something like this where they uh, chip apart all of the diagonal lines because they're not really sure how to make an intersecting line that goes through. Some kids will actually see the shape as segmented and then when they go to approach it, um, it comes out as very disjointed. That is a different kind of issue. I wouldn't call that a motor planning issue. Uh, they really might be struggling with seeing the gestalt of the figure itself in their mind's eye and then being able to reproduce it. However, if the issue is really that they're kind of um, approaching the lines in an awkward way, they're not necessarily drawing a sequence that makes sense. They are, they're just picking lines and gradually trying to add them to build the figure, you might be looking at more of a motor planning problem. And in this case, I really do start working with kids to identify what thing do I build first. Functionally, if a child wants to build an animal, for example, and let's say it's a horse, I'm working with a kid right now on this particular one, he's sold on the horse, he really needs to build it, but um, he maybe starts with the head because when you're drawing a person, you always start with the head, right? The best place to start is actually with the body. So we talk about making the big oval and then what comes off of the big oval. Oh, now we have to add some legs. Oh, we have to add his neck and then we add his head. And now you see that the drawing becomes much more proportional than if I had started with the head and then try to add all these extras as I go, where um, then maybe I get lost or maybe I start putting things in weird spots um, because I'm drawing the neck like this and I'm drawing the head over here. So I don't have um, everything sequenced the way that I need to for it to come out accurately. So uh, the other, and the last thing that I sometimes see is that when you're, giving a child a dot grid design and they're supposed to be able to put the design on the dot grid. Let's see, let me think of an example. Um, oh, it could be a triangle, let's say. We'll keep it easy. Um, that, they, that they don't know where to start or which dot to pick. And so maybe they'll start down here but then their triangle is going to end up really, you know, tall and skinny because the dots that they picked to create it are not the right ones. This is another a big sign if you think your child might have a motor planning issue and you're not really sure because you only copied designs that didn't have dots in them, definitely try to try out using a dot grid. Um, have some different designs. There's plenty of things that you can print off and look up very easily online and, and see, is it that the child can't see what they're uh, copying or accurately perceive what they're copying? Or is it really that they're just not motor planning their approach effectively and they might just be concentrating on connecting dots, but that's not really leaving them with the right figure um, or the act of the most accurate figure at the end of the design copying process. Uh, so I hope that information was helpful for you. Remember, visual motor issues uh, may not just be from difficulties with visual perception or um, integrating vision and motor. They could come from difficulty coordinating and grading your muscles so the figure doesn't look very accurate when they copy it. Uh, which drives down their score. It could be that there's a visual monitoring issue that where you need to actually train the visual system to guide what the fingers are doing. Or it could be a motor planning issue where the child just doesn't know how to approach the build of the figure and they're still struggling with the sequence of what to do. Those are my tips for today on helping a child with visual motor deficits um, who also maybe has a dysgraphia presentation learn 
how to address these issues so that they can have better outcomes in their writing and drawing skills. I'm Aubrey Schmally. If you like this video, please uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, uh, ask me questions, and I will try to respond. I hope that this helps you help your child be successful. And if you're a therapist, gives you a few different ideas of how to work with a child who may have some of these things that show up in their visual motor testing. I will be back soon with more tips and strategies and activities to help your child be successful.